issues, uh, and I will show you why when we run the, run the command very shortly. So everything is based on one socket per domain, 16 cores, 128 gig of memory, uh, with a full rack that comes down to 64 gig with a half rack. And again, going, going back to um, talking about, we do that, we don't make it any smaller, the granularity, because it means you'll end up getting resources being shared between the range, which of course cause a performance uh, impact. So last thing to talk about, um, patching. We released the QMU, I call it the QMU, quarterly maintenance update. Uh, it's officially called the quarterly full stack download patch update, but that becomes too much of a mouthful. Uh, it comes out every uh, quarterly um, and we advise you to upgrade all the components within the rack. The, the storage cells, the compute node, the switches, if they're deemed to be necessary, uh, to ensure everything's at a base, base level. You can patch your general purpose domains if you have application requirements, but everything else is has to be kept at the same level to, to ensure uh, you're in the best possible uh, health. Obviously, if you do encounter issues, then you can patch as you know, recommended by support. <coughs> right, the thumb bit. So, I have nabbed a full rack T5 uh, supercluster from uh, Santa Clara. Um, and what I've done in terms of configuration um, is I've nabbed the, the, the QA team system. It was already set up, I didn't set it up. So what we've got is they've got an S11 application domain as their primary here, S11 application domain as their primary there. Uh, as I said earlier, they don't have much choice. It's either that or an x domain. And then uh, I've got a database, two database, three database domains here, and an S10 application domain. In terms of uh, other configuration options, I've put installed Oracle Solaris cluster in the last application domain. I've set up some zone clusters. Uh, Op Center is running on the first database domain. Uh, and the QA folks are currently uh, playing some applications in the first domain, so I won't, won't run around. So what I do is I keep jumping back to this and, and we'll take a look. <coughs> so. How are we doing for time, by the way? So, I'm on the first um, T58 compute node. It really is a T58 one. So those are five domains, and they've got it set up in a, in a default CPU memory uh, split. That core mem is a tool that comes with the platform. It can only be run from the uh, primary control domain, and it gives you the option of um, changing the, the CPU memory allocation to each of your domains. I can't do it on this domain at the moment because it's not mine. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you can either choose from custom configurations, which gives you different options of changing the number of cores, the amount of memory allocated, um, and or you can go down to your own one. You're still limited to the uh, minimum number of, of cores. I think it's four, four cores, 128 gig of memory for a full rack, and four, 64 for a half rack, because of the memory differences between the two racks. It looks like someone's already run this before anyway.
So these F numbers are just really uh, internal config numbers. Uh, it's a five domain config, essentially. And it looks like they've been running it before because it changes the um, service processor configuration layout for each of the CPU and memory uh, in the box. Who's played with Elon before? Okay. So, all T series uh, have the ability to make use of LDOMs, uh, logical domains. These are physical, uh, virtual, this is physical virtualization in that, uh, unlike zones, you can have effectively your own running kernel, essentially. Um, so, it, it, and hence the reason why we have, have the choice between Solaris 11 or S10 in terms of your algorithm. So the LDM command is just the LDOM uh, manager command, and I'm just listing the configuration of this first T5 node. It shows the number of virtual threads that are allocated to the domain, and their usage, how much memory, uh, and more importantly, our PCR root complex. So if you recall the numbers back from the presentation in terms of PCR numbers, you'll see these work in pairs and they relate to a specific power, um, power, uh, CPU module here, units. We also have um, so this listed here. So virtualized switches. So in terms of accessing the domains as far as the administrator is concerned, you can log in via the management network, the client network, however you want to connect to them. Um, but in terms of the primary control domain, uh, our first domain on the, the T5, you have access to all the consoles of the LDOMs. So the internal ports there, the tenant local host, and then the port number to jump into the console. So here's our um, first DB. I've just jumped onto this database domain here. And he's running a couple of X data database domains. One's actually being used for uh, OC. In terms of the two nodes, are they? Is there any clever seeking between the LDOM configurations, or is it manual on both? Manual on both. So you do have to match them up manually when you build, when you change anything. Do you mean in terms of the configuration choices? Yeah, I mean if you've got the supercluster, you know, the tools, they don't talk across. No, no, they don't. So it's purely two separate boxes. Yes, yeah, they're, they're two separate boxes, but interconnected yeah. by the fiddly band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and they have to be kept separate because. <coughs> Previously with T4, we used to have mirrored configurations between the T4. Mm. So you couldn't have a, a mismatch of a number of LDOMs yeah. with the box. <coughs> with this, you can. Okay. We've got a five domain config here. And you can go up to eight, eight or one if you know, the, mm. the business required it. Have one <coughs> big um, accelerator domain, um, ship it off via data guard to another, another big domain. It, it really is down to how you want to configure it to meet your business requirements. So you made it more flexible rather than. Yeah, it, previously we imposed um, 
with 1 to 30 configuration choices. Um, the version of the software for Stack 4, we limited it to 18. Mm. So we're giving you, the customers, yeah. the choice about how you want to set it up to be your clients. You could say, Supercluster is an engineered system. There have been lots of discussions that is it, is it not? Yes, it still meets all the requirements of an engineered system. Uh, we still impose constraints um, based on best practices, performance, um, to ensure that you get a consistent platform. But as we move on through the development cycle, we're giving you more of an option to how you want to set it up. Yeah. And that's safe to say that if you said, I want, I want a two-node wrap cluster with eight threads on one side yeah. and 256 on the other, that's when the S team would be asking some questions about, are you sure? Yeah. So but it's possible, but it's... it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to really be able to justify why that's a good idea. But yeah. yeah, I mean... I, in thinking about what to demo, I, I, I'm literally just going to show you each of the components and talk a bit about um, some of them. Um, I can't really run any benchmarks because it's not really going to be applicable to any of you because, you know, if, if your company was interested in going down this engineered systems route, then they're better off talking to the Oracle sales folks, the Oracle solution centres that can do benchmarks for you to meet your, your requirements. Uh, and then also you can talk to the S team about potential uh, solutions. I mean, the world is your oyster, <laughs> what you can do with these things. Um, we, we just give you the base platform that's been tried and tested, um, you know, that stops you going off the beaten track uh, and running into some you know, obscure configurations. So th this is my S10 application domain, running there, uh, running Sun Cluster. Uh, I've got a couple of zone clusters running. Who is familiar with Cluster? Are you all familiar with zone clusters? No, we've been using them. Have you been? Have you, have you used zones in the cluster, but not? You're, you're talking about, uh, you, you're more used to doing HA containers? Yeah. Okay. When I first uh, came into looking at zone clusters, it took me a little while to grasp, get my head around it really, because I was so used to traditional HA failover. So with failover zones, you're, you, know, you, you can use a, a number of uh, file systems. What became slightly annoying in terms of ZFS is that you couldn't use uh, PXFS over ZFS. You had to fail over the whole the whole pool to the other node. So they then came down came down the, the zone cluster uh, path. Zone cluster came about because of customer or people wanting to have the configuration choice of running Oracle Rack within zones. Now imagine if you've got a fairly large Storage cluster running with three, four nodes, and you have a department that wants to uh, run their own cluster but only wants to make use of two of the storage nodes. You start sticking CRS on there, it will go and probe all the nodes and give you all of them. Um, what they wanted to do was give you the choice of segregation and stick in zone clusters so when you go to install uh, CRS, all it sees and all it can only see are the nodes that were in the zone cluster. The other thing that's worth getting around is traditionally in um, uh, HA environments you fail over, you fail over your resources from one node. That may include storage as well. Zones clusters, you have two zones running on each each node. So let me jump on.